Well, as parents, we try to make our kids laugh when they're sad, put band-aids on their little boo-boos, and protect them from harm. But when a child is diagnosed with diabetes, keeping your little one feeling good and safe can be overwhelming. In fact, each year, over 20,000 people, 20 or younger, are diagnosed with diabetes. That's according to the Centers for Disease Control. The Balancing Act is honoring National Diabetes Awareness Month, and as we began our Living with Diabetes series, we're getting a better understanding of this chronic disease and how parents of children with diabetes diabetes handle the life changes that inevitably come with the diagnosis. I want to introduce you to Crystal Sanchez. Her son Matthew was diagnosed with juvenile or type 1 diabetes in 2005 when he was just five years old. And this is Kelly Rodriguez, a certified diabetes educator and director of patient education at the Diabetes Research Institute at the University of Miami. Crystal, Kelly, good morning to you. Thanks so much for being with us on the show. Thank good morning. You. Thank you for having us. Crystal, I do want to start with you this morning. How did you learn little Matthew had type 1 diabetes. Matthew uh, started to drink an incredible amount of water mm -hmm. and where he was taking a big cups up to be bed and filling him up in a faucet and drinking inevitably he started wetting the bed and uh, one night he told me he said my body's tired mommy but my mind won't let me go to sleep and at that point I knew there was something wrong. Oh my goodness, you're scaring me because I was, my son has been drinking a lot of water lately and I know that's something that we have to get checked out with him and they say that is one of the things that you really need to look out for. And Kelly, I, I think, what is it about diabetes that makes it just so precarious for not just the parents but for the little patients as well who are dealing with it? Yes, look, diabetes is a condition of high blood glucose levels or high blood sugar, and it comes about as a result of insulin function, either not enough insulin or the insulin not working appropriately. And so it's a very challenging and delicate balancing act, which is so apt for this program mm, in terms mm -hmm. of the balancing act. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many factors that impact blood sugar levels from food choices, exercise and activity, stress, be it emotional stress or illness, mm -hmm. uh, weight changes, hormonal changes. And so families families and children and people with diabetes need to balance all of these factors and so it can be incredibly challenging in terms of the management. Uh, so the most important thing is in terms of getting information, education and the right support networks to help families and parents feel that they can confidently and competently manage this disease. You know, I was going to say, it's interesting that you're mentioning all of these things in terms of managing it, but Crystal, you had no idea. I mean, you listen to what she's talking about now, but when he was first diagnosed, you're probably, your head's probably spinning. We had no idea. It's like bringing home a newborn child. Um, we had to learn how to live again as a family. And um, it, it, it's a disease that not only affects Matthew, but it affects everybody in our family. He is 11 years old now, yeah. and I want to ask you, listen, I have a 10-year-old, so <laughs> what is the difference um, in terms of dealing with diabetes now that he's 11 than when he was first diagnosed at 5? Now there's birthday parties, there's sleepovers, Absolutely. and there's football. Uh, you know, and also we need to throw in some hormones to that mix, and uh, so it's constantly, we're, we're juggling at all times, and diabetes, you know, it, it's always with us. There's no vacations, there's no breaks. We have to monitor it 24-7. But I think at the end of the day, you as a mom, you want him to have a normal life. Absolutely. Diabetes does not define Matthew or a family. He, uh, he's uh, quite the charmer, and uh, diabetes is just a small part of him. You know, it's interesting that you mention that because it knows no gender, it knows no ethnicity, it knows no race, it doesn't know even celebrity status. It's definitely a disease that does not discriminate, even in Hollywood. Let's take a look at this clip from Denise Jonas, who was recently on our show to discuss her son Nick of the Jonas Brothers. He has type 1 diabetes. Let's listen to what she had to say. He's just so self-sufficient. So when this type 1 diabetes um, occurred in our lives, and when it happened to him when he was 13, really just kind of blindsided us. And um, we just weren't prepared for it. We didn't know anyone who had type 1 diabetes. We didn't know anything about it. It wasn't something that ran in our family. However, um, Nick made a decision. Um, within minutes of when he was diagnosed that he was going to make a difference, that he wanted to really help and be a voice because he wasn't going to let it slow him down, nor did he think it should slow anyone else that had this down. And um, we've just embraced that as a family, as parents. I'm thrilled as a mother that I get to share and have a voice.
Wow, it was so inspiring to talk to her because it really is important, is it not, to kind of have the whole family involved because sometimes I think as parents, and you can probably agree as a mom, I've got to do it all. I've got to be the one. It won't get done unless I do it. But I think having that family support system in this type of situation is probably critical, is it not? Yes. Um, our whole family had to learn about diabetes and Matthew's needs. Um, the Diabetes Research Institute gave us um, not only support for that educational classes, uh, nutrition classes, um, and even where my three-year-old at the time was uh, learning what he needed to do for his big brother. <laughs> even the three-year-old, you know, and I wanted to circle back real quick to the Nick Jonas thing. Did you get a picture or were you in the same room or breathing the same air? <laughs> yes, <laughs> as yes. Uh, Matthew got a chance to go to the sound check and actually uh, he asked Nick a question on stage uh, mm -hmm. about how he treats his lows uh, mm -hmm. when he's giving a concert. So that was a nice little connection uh, for it's an 11-year-old. And it's nice for him to see that it can happen, as we said, to anybody, right? Anyone. And I wanted to ask you, Kelly, and this is kind of a, you know, one of those questions that I'm sure a lot of parents who are struggling this, with this want to know. Is there any hope? I mean, tell me, tell me we're close to a cure. It's such a commonly asked question um, of people with diabetes and families. Uh, diabetes um, is definitely, we've had so many progresses in terms of um, the treatment modalities available for families and children living with diabetes to make the day to day management as easy as it can be, never easy. And we are getting closer and closer to a cure. Uh, the Diabetes mm -hmm. Research Institute has a team of researchers that are working tirelessly um, and have undergone, undertaken some groundbreaking research in the area of islet cell transplantation. Um, yeah. to enable people to live insulin free mm. and there are a mm. number of people who have severe highs and lows that really impacts their quality of life and have undergone and participated in this research to enable them to be insulin free mm. in terms of insulin injections. As we end this, I, I wanted to ask you, Crystal, it's, it's you know, so important to, to hear from you and for, for mothers out there to hear from you in terms of the support and in terms of what you would say to a mother out there whose son or daughter may be dealing with type 1 diabetes and may be feeling, oh my goodness, I just don't know if I can deal with this. What would you say? Well, as a parent, um, you want the best for your kids Absolutely. and you can deal with anything. You just have to be prepared. Um, educate everybody around you and roll with the punches and we use a lot of uh, humor in our family mm -hmm. to, to get through some of those mm -hmm. difficult times but it does not define our family just a part of it wonderful great advice great way to end it ladies thank you so much for coming by and sharing this really useful information uh, with not just our audience but with me personally as well I really appreciate it thank, thank you, you Daniel. Daniel. absolutely and if you want more information on diabetes and the Diabetes Research Institute head to diabetesresearch.org and make sure you keep watching our with Diabetes series for even more useful information.